Hello everyone, and let's get started on this video. So what are we gonna be doing? Well, we're gonna be using this epoxy resin, the epoxy hardener, the slow hardener. Uh, we're gonna need a little, we're gonna need a utility knife, um, some spreaders, uh, masking tape, something to keep us from dying from fiberglass, a sander, 50 grit sandpaper on it. We're also gonna be using this West Systems 407 low density ferrin filler. This stuff is going to be added to the epoxy and this is going to make our epoxy a putty-like um, consistency. And that's what we're gonna be using to fill the gaps. Um, some epoxy bilge paint, white from Total Bilge. And let's get started. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go around the perimeter here and we're gonna cut all the uh, hardened fiberglass pieces that are sticking out. This is very easy to do once this stuff is hardened and um, just using a razor blade, it, it cuts off pretty easy. Just make sure not to cut yourself doing this. And so we're gonna go around and trim all this excess up. Also, you don't see it in the video, but I went around the perimeter of the tray uh, with some masking tape, as you can see there. So next we're gonna grab our sander and we're just gonna give this thing a light sanding. Um, the, uh, from the process of the epoxy curing, it actually produces a wax on the top layer of the epoxy. So we're just gonna give this a slight scuff, and of course we're sanding up the, some of the rough edges, if there's any bumps from the epoxy pour, um, but just a very light sanding. We're just trying to get everything roughed up to create a surface so the new epoxy that we're gonna be putting on is going to bond well. And we'll give it a quick blow, get all the debris off. And then finally we're gonna take our acetone and we're gonna uh, wipe the surface down and make sure it's clean and free of residue. And just another blow. If you don't have a blow gun, an air blower, this something. All right, so now we're gonna mix up our uh, epoxy resin. And I ended up doing seven pumps each. And good, 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 good mix. And now we're gonna add our fairing filler. Now this stuff is super dusty. I mean, super dusty. It's a very, very light substance. I think it's a silica. And so now I'm trying to get my consistency. So this is kind of like a ketchup consistency, still runny, and you have to add quite a bit of it. And it's it takes a while for it to mix in. You almost have to add a little at a time, stir. So now we got our we now we got our consistency. We're kind of like a like a putty. And so now we're going to go around the sides. And our job is to start to fill in these voids um, that we have around the edges. The voids, also some of the holes from the uh, old screw holes from the mounting hardware. Now again, you don't really, I kind of got it there in the in that circle for the clean out hatches. You don't need to do that because it's gonna get drilled out. And so now I'm just smearing it around, smearing it around. Again, this is the underside, so this side doesn't have to look perfect. And you'll see the finished results here. But you're gonna have to figure out the best way that works for you um, to get it down in the crevices and the cracks. Um, end up having to use your fingers, a popsicle stick, whatever you can do. And again, just moving it around, getting it everywhere, trying to get it in there. So you can see why I put the tape there. And again, you get about, you're gonna have about 20 so minutes to get this, to get this part done before the epoxy starts to uh, set up. And see, now I'm just using my finger to kind of push everything in the voids. And I'm just going around. All right, and now I'm just taking my, my, uh, my squeegee thing and I'm just going around, just getting all the excess off. 
that blue cloth right there has got acetone on it, so every time I wipe, it's it's cleaning off that edge. And then you just kind of want to make sure that everything is somewhat laying flat. You don't want any big gulps on uh, big puddles of epoxy. You can use a brush to kind of get the excess off, one of those chip brushes. And there we go. And that's our finished product. That's what it's looking like. So now we're going to let this thing cure overnight. And we'll come back to it tomorrow. All right, everything's cured. And we gotta clean this little waxy film off the top. Um, this is just caused by the epoxy curing. Uh, so we're gonna use a sander, 80 grit. Of course, we got our masking tape back on. I wanna show you that. And so now I'm just gonna go around this thing and I'm gonna give it a light sand. And just gonna clean that off. And I'm just going around, just give this thing a light sanding because um, that wax that comes up uh, we just want to get that off so that everything sticks together. And just sanding down any high spots, if there's any bumps along that line. And this stuff stands pretty easy. And there you go, just showing you guys. If you have a blow gun, that works great for cleaning out the, uh, the uh, sanding, uh, the epoxy stuff in there. So we give this thing a quick blow dry. And now, soap and water and a green Scotch-Brite pad. We're just gonna get this thing wet. And this is just gonna ensure that we got all this wax residue off of there. And it's gonna give it a scrub-a-dub-dub. -dub. And I'm just gonna come through the just a, a, t a paper towel here and just wipe it down. Another little blow dry. And now we're gonna bring it inside here. Ah, we're gonna grab some acetone. We're gonna give this thing a quick wipe of acetone, just to remove any last minute fingerprints and oily residue, if there are any. And another little blow dry. All right, now we're ready. This is gonna be the second coat, the second layer. Um, I, again, I did another seven pumps, seven pumps of resin, seven pumps of hardener, and then just showing you here how much of this uh, fairing filler that I used to get my, my consistency that I wanted. This stuff is super, it's just so light. Um, as you can see, it, it just, you, you, you mix and mix and mix, and then finally it kind of absorbs into it. And I did some more there. And of course this adds to the amount of, you know, of epoxy that you have. And there you go. You can kind of see it's like a molasses consistency. And now I'm just gonna try to make a bead around the perimeter. I should have done it this way last time, but you, you, you learn. Just making a bead. There we go. And with getting this kind of consistency, it helps everything stay, just like a wood filler or anything like that. If it's just straight epoxy, it just kind of runs and, and runs and runs. Grab our, our Bondo squeegee here. And this thing works awesome. And now I'm just gonna I'm just gonna smear it and just kind of work everything towards the side. And I'm almost using it as a straight edge or as even like a putty knife to where it's tapering it out towards the uh, it's tapering it out towards the uh, center of the uh, the hatch. But my main concern, all I'm trying to do is just get everything filled, all the, the last little voids filled up. And just to make it even, I mean this is, at this point really I would say it's more cosmetic. Because the hatch doesn't sit on the very edge. And there you go, just smoothing things out. And 
and any extra residue that I have, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just scraping it across somewhere in the middle. I mean, this, it's, it's not that big of a deal. There we go. And just, again, using my fingers, just working it into anywhere that I see there's just a little bit of a, a pit or a hole. And that's where the screw holes w were, and they're now leveled out. And again, you know, we, we put two coats of epoxy on the wood core. If, if for whatever reason water got in there, I mean, everything is so sealed, I'm not too worried about it. But I want everything to look nice and uniform. And I've got this video also, this is sped up to about 200%, so it's about double time. There we go. And that's that little recess that we had cut out from the bottom tray and just trying to get that to lay smooth. And there's that other hole over there. I just figured I'd just go ahead and fill it. And that's pretty much it. Now just kind of smoothing everything out. Again, just double checking everything. And now we're coming down to the end. And just again, smoothing everything out. A little dimple right there. And there we go. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe all the excess off. Just paper towel, just getting everything off the tape. And now I'm just gonna remove all my tape. So I don't want the epoxy to cure to the tape and then that blue tape be caught in there forever. And then I'm gonna take some acetone and I'm just wiping around the sides of the tray, getting everything off, if anything got underneath. Of course, cleaning off my table. And, uh, and that'll do it. And here you go, end result. So this is gonna sit overnight and dry. And then we'll, we will tomorrow and the next day, we will apply the um, white bilge paint. And then it's gonna look hopefully like what it did from the factory. And this should last forever. So stay tuned. Okay, it's been overnight. Um, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna paint the top of this. First, we gotta sand it. 220 grit sandpaper on a sanding block works great for this. And we're gonna rough everything up for the epoxy paint. Again, we got our blue tape around, uh, masking tape around the edge. So sandy sand sand. We're gonna grab a little bit of acetone here, wipe off any residual um, oils and things like that. Get everything nice and clean. Wipey wipe. Give everything a quick blow dry, get all any, any stuff off of there. And now I'm gonna mix up the epoxy paint. I got the smallest container I could get, which was a quart. Um, you, only need, you probably only need a quarter of a quart to do this. And so I'm just gonna pour a little into there, grab my roller. This is just a regular smooth nap roller. And now we're gonna roll this thing out. And here's where you're gonna see the transformation to where it's gonna look like a legit hatch. Just spreading everything out, taking my time. And now I'm just got everything coated going back over it. And as you can tell, it's just what a difference this makes. What an absolute difference. And then there we go. End results. Looks nice. And that's just the first coat. We're going to do one more coat. 
All right, it's been uh, overnight. Coming out here to check this. We're gonna give this thing a light sanding, 220. We're just gonna scuff up the surface. We need some soap and water. Just wipe it down after we scuffed it up. Give it a quick blow dry. And now we're gonna mix up our paint. Pour the second coat out. Grab the roller. Roll it some more. And then I'm like, oh crap. I didn't put any masking tape down. So now I'm like, uh-oh. Let's tape this up. I'm telling you guys, it's not as easy as it looks filming these videos. And there we go, just brushing it out. This coat is way thicker. I used a lot more. Now that we had a good surface for everything to bond to, um, it is a lot thicker. This epoxy, I've, I, this epoxy paint lays nice and flat too. And so now I'm just rolling it both directions, vertically and horizontally. And it just, it looks so nice. And there you guys go. That's the end. All done. I'm gonna let that thing dry. Um, I'm gonna let it probably cure for three or four days. And then I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna drill a hole for the clean out hatch and the hinges. And I think that's it. So, Stay tuned, part five will be out soon, and part five I'll be uh, um, drilling the holes for the clean out hatches and the hinges and getting it mounted on the boat. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video production so far. Take care, see ya.